So now that you know the basics, let's talk about IPv6 for your network. IPv6 network address planning. That's where you should start. Let's talk about the different network sizes. The minimum allocation of RIRs to LIRs, that's providers, is a slash 32. And the allocation from LIRs to end users is mostly slash 48. It's still a lot of addresses. And for client networks, you should always use a slash 64. Because remember, you need a slash 64 to use Slack. That's stateless address auto configuration. If you need that or if you don't, doesn't matter, always use a slash 64 for client networks. In IPv4, you might have calculated how many hosts do you have. Do I need a slash 24? Do I need a slash 23? Or maybe I need a slash 27? This doesn't matter with IPv6. You always use a slash 64. Don't even count how many hosts that is. It's more than enough, but you should not make it smaller. For transfer networks between two routing devices or a switch and a router, always use a slash 127. Remember, IPv6 is 128 bits, so that means a slash 127 has exactly two addresses. You can also use a larger network like a slash 126 if you want to use NHRPs, next hop redundancy protocols, or you have multiple nodes that need to be on the same segment. But don't use a slash 64 on transfer networks. Slash 64 is for clients, slash 127 or 126 is for transfer. Your whole organization will probably get a slash 48. And also, if you are a private customer, you also probably will get a slash 48. This is the standard network sizes. So you might ask, why should I use a slash 127 with only two nodes when I have a transfer network? Well, a lot of people were asking that. There was a discussion for years. There were two major opinions. Opinion A, we use slash 64 with all networks. I don't care how many hosts they have. We have enough addresses. We don't need to save them. Let's use slash 64. Option B was, let's not waste addresses. We can use a single slash 64 for all the transfer networks in the organization. Well, finally, we have a standard with RFC 6164. The title is using 127-bit IPv6 prefixes on inter-router links. And this is the new standard and it should be used. Don't use a larger network unless you need it. You might think, okay, if I use the first network, this is colon colon, so the zero network, there is subnet router anycast. Well, this is deactivated on slash 127 links, so we don't have a problem. You can use the first network colon colon, the first address is zero and the second address is one inside this specific prefix. You can use it, not a problem. Another design thing is, should you use link local or unique local addresses or global addresses for your infrastructure? There is an advantage of using link local or unique local addresses. Routing protocols use link local anyway. And your infrastructure would not be reachable from the outside, which means nobody can attack it from the outside. That's a good thing. But the disadvantage is, there is no trace route possible. You have no visibility. If you do a trace route from the outside and you have addresses on the inside that are not routed, then you cannot see the hops. You can only see asterisks. And also, there is no path MTU discovery possible, which might be a problem for most of the applications. The other disadvantage is you cannot manage your infrastructure from the outside. Okay, if you use a VPN to connect to the inside, you're still able to access, but if you don't, you're locked out.